Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be comparing these two phones, the FX Tech Pro 1 and the Unihertz Titan. The reason I have both of them is because I thought that this one was screwy and so I bought a different one and I was like, I'll just return this one. And then I realized that I had actually just messed up the settings on this one. Still returning it, but with some regrets now. So this is just going to be a basic comparison video and then I guess just like my overall impressions at the end and do I regret buying this one? I do. Spoiler alert. So I'm going to start with the camera because most people, you know, I obviously do have a camera, like a camera camera because I'm filming on it, but you know, if I'm out and about, you know, I'm living, going day to day, I'm not out here like with a DSLR. I don't own a DSLR. So this is basically the one I'm going to use the most. Now. The Pro 1 is it's decent. It's pretty good. I wouldn't say it's like the best phone camera ever, but pictures come out good. They're good. I would say they're good. I would almost say they're very good. Uh, the first time I tried to take a video on this phone, the whole app crashed and I was like, well, that's not good. So I tried a different, I downloaded a different camera app. It was like, you can't record a video. I was like, well, this phone costs a lot of money for it not to be working. I reset it and now it does work now that I have reset the phone so hopefully that does not come back as an issue. The camera on the Unihertz Titan is bad. It's just bad. People are like it's passable. It's not 2010 okay. The camera on this phone is sucks. It does suck. I have posted photos on Instagram that I took on this phone and I'm not I mean, I would still post them, but my standards aren't that high. It, it's not, a, it's not, good. it's just not good. And it's fine because the phone does not cost that much and it does not come out here saying like, oh, look at this great camera. Like, no, it's just, it has one. It works. I'm not saying it's like dysfunctional. And it does take video. Actually, the video, there's no 4K on this one. There is 4K on this one, which I'm, it doesn't look that great. But the video on this actually does not look bad. And it's actually a little, it's too HD to upload to directly to TikTok, if that's something that you're interested in, because <laughs> TikTok caps at 1080p. It's actually more than 1080, but less than 4K. And it, lo it looks fine. It looks good. I would say it looks good. It's not 4K, but it, it looks good. Um, speakers, there's two on here. There's one on this side, one on that side, top and bottom, or sides. If you're holding your phone like this, it's on the bottom side, so it is where your hands go. But my hands kind of go all over this phone. So there's not really, I wouldn't say there's like a better place to put them. They, they're fine where they are, maybe on the other side, whatever. They sound good. I, they're not going to like win a sound award, but they, I mean, I, they're, they're good. I, I appreciate the speakers on this phone. Not a whole lot to say. The speaker on this phone, um, it's not great. <laughs> it's not great. I mean, you can hear it. It's not, it's better for music than it is for dialogue. And only one of these is a speaker. There's two speaker grills. Uh, one of them works and one of them doesn't. So that's, that's neat and fun. I think it's this one that does work, but the point is one of them doesn't. And that is not a flaw that I actually emailed them about that. And that is just something that they've did on purpose. Weird. So the bonus button, this phone does not have a bonus button. So we're just going to ignore that. This phone has a bonus button on the side right here. It's the red button right there. And I actually really like this little handy little button here. If you long press it, it turns on the flashlight. And if you double tap it, it brings up different screenshot options. So obviously you can just take a screenshot the regular way with like the two, um, the volume down and the power, or you can hold the power and hit it. But if you double tap the red key, you have options. So as you can see, you can have area, which is just like a cropped version of whatever's on your screen, full, which is obviously just the whole screen, scroll, which is exactly what it sounds like. You can take a screenshot, but scroll a little bit. And record is actually just like built in screen recording, which works, it works great. It records and you can stop it with a little pop-up. So you can take a screen recording and you can start and stop it with a button in the corner here, or you can start and stop it with a pull down or however, there's different settings you can set it to. Actually, I really like this button and I really like the different options and I like the built-in screen recording and I actually think that's really, that's really nice. It was nice, it was a nice touch. And like I said, this one does not have a bonus button at all. It does have a shutter button, but that's, it's just a shutter button. You can't set it to anything else. It is two steps. So you hold it down once to focus and then another time to take the picture. You can accidentally just take the picture. It's very, like the two steps are like very close together, but it does show you on the screen when it's focusing. So it's nice. Next thing we're going to talk about is the keyboard. 
obviously. That's why you came here. The key shortcuts on the Pro One, they, if you're like typing something, you can hold like control C to copy, control V to paste, like the, the usual, like control A, like you can select all the usual key shortcuts that you would be used to on like a computer keyboard are there and you can use them. Now, long pressing from the home screen is something that people want to launch apps from apparently. I don't really, that's not something that I've ever wanted, but if you want to do that on the Pro One, you can like long press W and it'll bring up whatever if you want to, you can set it to like WhatsApp or whatever you want to do. It's not set by default, but you can change the settings and it's whatever setting you want. You have to be using the default launcher to make that work. I don't use that, but I did turn it, I turned it on just to check. You can use long press on this bad Larry. Long press on the home screen. I have my notes here. I'm just reading. It, if you short press, it just Google searches, same as this one. If you long press it, it does Google search a few results and then it shows you all the apps from that letter. Okay, so if you have the default launcher, it's called Quick Step. Um, if you hold, if you like hold down, let's say a W, you hold down the W. So you search the W, comes up with different apps that start with W. As far as I can tell, I haven't looked that hard because like I said, I don't use this launcher. But as far as I can tell, you can't really set, like you can't just like hit W and it goes straight to WhatsApp. For me, that's not really a problem. I don't really care. I don't use key shortcuts. It doesn't really matter to me. I just... Something to keep in mind if that's something that actually matters to you. So the actual keyboard itself. So this keyboard is wide. I have an EV as my launcher, so it doesn't it doesn't go sideways, but the default launcher does go sideways. This keyboard is very wide. I have large thumbs, so it's not really a problem for me, but if I ever want to like reach over, you get you get, you get a little stretch, you get a little finger stretching going on. It feels pretty good. If you're using the physical keyboard, there's no it's so much like a computer keyboard, there's no like auto capitalization there's no um like suggestion bar at all uh you can't scroll with it either it does have arrow keys so you can scroll like that for a web page but you can't like it doesn't have like tactile so like if you scroll on the keys nothing happens here's something weird if you set a language on this keyboard it doesn't work <laughs> very weird if you go into the settings to like the physical keyboard settings and you set a language it just it makes it uh, not work correctly because it changes the settings. I'm just like typing on a word document yada yada Making some words here. Let's say I need a question mark. You hit this little arrow There's like an arrow up. There's one on each side. You hit that and then you hit L and L has the question mark on it And that's how you get the question mark. Now if you have a language set, especially I mean I have I had English US you set for a while the way you get the symbols is to press shift, but if you press shift on a symbol that already is on a letter, you just get capital, and then you can't even get the symbol at all. So if you have, I think of the QWERTY layout, they say do not set the language or else the keys don't work as intended. Stupid, um, but it doesn't actually interfere with anything if you just don't set it. You'll get a notification a couple times if you screw around with it, but it'll go away. Um, so all the buttons, escape is exactly, it basically operates as like a back button like a this kind of back button over here and um, tab tabs it over caps caps lock button actually has a little light in it when you have caps on but if I <laughs> like okay you can see it. and shift is you have to hold it while you're holding the other key you can't just press it you have to hold it um, control works like control the little arrows I'm just going around the keys. Little arrows is what you do for changing it to the symbol. The F key functions as a home button for some reason. I don't know if you can set that. You probably can. Maybe I'll update this video at the end of it when I actually look into the settings of this phone. But the Alt key brings up the emojis and it's the Google emoji like search bar and everything. And the SIM key does nothing. I have been pressing this key and hitting everything. Like there's not, the SIM key literally doesn't do anything. I don't know why they put it on there. It, there's no, you can't, you don't use it with symbols. Maybe if you were going to use like, if you had like the quartz layout and you had a language set, but I did try, cause you know how I was talking about how you can get certain symbols. I did try it with when I had um, English US set as the language, I tried to use the SIM key to get the symbols that you couldn't get to and it didn't work. This, the SIM key, it just doesn't do anything. It doesn't do a damn thing and I don't know why they fucking wasted the space. So the keyboard 
on the Titan. The keyboard on the Titan feels good. It does. It does not feel like a Blackberry keyboard. It takes a little tiny bit of time to get used to, but it feels good. It's reasonably um, clicky and the buttons on top are also clicky. There's the back button, the like recent caps and alt. They feel good. The home button does not actually click. That's very weird. You have to set the on-screen keyboard to be on. You have to use Kika and you have to set the on-screen keyboard to be on for this keyboard to work properly. If you do how use a different keyboard on this, uh, it doesn't really work as intended. And if you don't have the virtual keyboard on, for some reason the buttons also don't work as intended. And what I mean by that is like you have to have like display on-screen keyboard at the same time. It doesn't actually display the keyboard. What it does is it literally just displays the like suggestion bar and the little punctuation suggestions. Um, it shows, if I wasn't on like an address bar, it would show word suggestions, but it has like all like the symbol suggestions coming up here. That's going to show up when you have like also display on screen keyboard set, but you have to have it set like as your virtual keyboard, even though it's not, it's your physical keyboard, like it all works together. So your settings should look like you know, virtual keyboard, kick a keyboard, display on screen. I did not realize that and I thought this one was like just stupid and dumb and turns out it was me. Oops. And the worst part is I was like, it's not showing me like the suggestion bar. You know what? This one doesn't even have a suggestion bar. God damn it. This is expensive for how little it gives you. This one's better than this one, but like it got so much more. The battery um, on this one is good. It's good. It'll get you through the day, but this one will get you through two days. Like no pro like I use this like regularly. Like, I'm not like stingy about it. I use it at work, whatever. I use it all, all day and it gets you through the day. I actually watched an episode of Bones after it had hit, after it went red, after it was 15%, I watched an episode of Bones and it was still like 10. Like this thing lasts forever. It's ridiculous. Now we're on to the weird quirks section of my notes here. Um, the screen sucks. The screen's bad on the Pro one, and it's pretty expensive for a phone with a shit screen. Let me show you what I'm talking about, because I have, I found a workaround. I have current, I am currently working around it, but let me, so this is not like the greatest photo of this Nightwish album. It's kind of blurry and it's a little bit dark, but the point, the point I'm getting at is that darks look bad, so this is actually a perfect photo. The, 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 the blacks look fine. The dark grays look bad. They look bad when you have low, low brightness on your phone, like your brightness is set pretty low. They look bad. I don't know if I'm gonna, because again, my brightness is pretty low. Although, is it? Because this is bright. The lowest brightness on this phone is not very low. Can you see, can you tell it that that's gray? Like that looks kind of green. Does that look kind of green? Let me, here's a better example. That. Does that look gray? to you or does that look kind of, does that look kind of green? It looks kind of green, you know? It kind of looks green. That's a little bit of a letdown for a phone that costs as much as this one did, especially because I actually paid more than it was worth. Oops. And just to prove that it does like low, like it looks like that, but if you brighten up the screen, like, um, look how much blacker that looks. Like it, it can display the color, not when not when the brightness is like on this photo. I'm gonna get copyrighted from friggin' Nightwish. See how the picture looks like dark now? So that's, um, I would say incredibly annoying, maybe borderline like very annoying. There is a workaround. Um, if you get this app called Screen Dimmer, there's a billion of them, but I mine's just like called Screen Dimmer. You hit that bad boy, cause then you can turn your brightness up, but then just dim on top of that. For some reason, if you dim it through an app and you don't just dim your brightness, then it looks fine. It doesn't look stupidly gr green. It's still, as it's dimmer now, it still looks black. I should not have to use a third party app to like view my phone screen. And then it's like the screenshots because it makes them all dark. And actually the camera too, because you're taking like, when you, you can't see what you're taking a picture of because it's dark. This dumb, that's dumb. There is possibly a solution. I don't know what it is but I know that the OnePlus 8 Pro is having the same problem and they are doing a software like update to solution that and they don't have to like replace the screen or anything. They can just fix it. Hopefully FX Tech starts realizing things and it's very obvious because when, you know when your screen's like about to time out and it gets like darker? See? Did you see him just turn green? 
because my phone was about to fall asleep so it like went darker and it shows the greens when it darkens itself. Do you see what I'm talking about? Very, very expensive for how dumb that is. But again, there is a workaround. This one's quirk is, is that it's a tablet. When you go into the Play Store and you look at apps, it only shows you apps that are compatible with tablets. And when you download certain apps, I know this because I tried to use Lightroom on it, it is the tablet version of said app. Now, that's not necessarily a bad thing. So here's why. When you go on certain apps like TikTok, this girl is learning how to skateboard. She's very cool. Her name is Grace Honeycut 03. As you can see, the video is like, because she took it on a phone that's not square, you can see the whole video in the middle of the screen. You can see the whole thing, nothing's cut off. On my previous phone, which is a BlackBerry Key 1, the video would take up the whole wideness, but it would just be cut off on top and bottom. So in some sense, this is actually nice because you don't have to, your video's not cut off. That also works for Snapchat, but that also worked on the BlackBerry too. So that wasn't like a tablet feature, but it is nice to know that you can see an entire Snapchat that someone sends you. You can see an entire TikTok, it's not cut off. Instagram stories are cut off. Here's a Taco Bell ad. See how it's cut off on the top and bottom? That's annoying, but um, I'm not really an Instagram story kind of person, so it doesn't matter to me, but if that's something that matters to you, definitely consider that uh, if you're thinking about getting this phone. Overall, the good things about this phone, it feels nice. It feels good to hold. It feels like it's a reasonable size in your hand. It's nice to scroll on apps and see them in the length that they were intended to be seen. That's all I have on this one. This one is nice because it's rugged. It's like sturdy, man. This thing is, I am a phone breaker. So this is probably gonna hold up a lot better than that is. So, and like, look at, I mean, look at this thing. Like this is elevated. This is like raised up. This is so breakable. It has a curved screen. I actually do want to talk about that a little bit. Uh, the curve screen is not as bad as I was expecting. I had a Galaxy S9 for a little bit and that curve screen was a freaking hassle. But I had to put a case on it to like ignore the fact that the screen was curved. So, like it because it stuck up. This one is actually not as bad as it looks because if you look like the screen looks like it's pretty curved. But if you actually turn it on, the screen does not go like the shiny part that goes over the edge. The screen like barely goes, the screen ends like the screen ends like there. Like it doesn't go down to here. It like ends like up here. So it's actually not as like accidental touchy as I was expecting, which is great because that was most of the reason I didn't buy this in the first place is that I was, I just, I was like, why would they have made it with a curved screen? That's very dumb. Now I can't see any advantage to this screen being curved, but because it's not actually all the way over the edge, it does not get in the way. Like a lot of people are saying like when you type on the numbers, you hit the screen. You, I, I don't cause like my, even if my nail hits the top of it, the screen does not actually come down that far. So for me, that's not a problem, but definitely something to keep in mind. Uh, very breakable, <laughs> very, very breakable. I have a screen protector on it. It doesn't, it looks like crap on this side because the screen's freaking curved. My overall impressions are that if I had realized that I was the one who screwed this one up with settings, I would have just, if I had just, I would have just fixed it and I would have just kept it. But alas, I bought this one when I thought that this one was just like wacky and messed up. And regret is a strong word, but this was a strong amount of money. <laughs> this was very expensive. I am keeping this one, the Pro One, I am keeping the Pro One for a number of reasons. Number one, I bought this off a person and not the store, so I can't return it. I can return this one because I bought it off the store and I've already started the process with them to return it. I'm literally just boxing this up tomorrow morning and bringing it to the post office. Probably will buy another one in a couple of months when I inevitably write this. This, like I said, overall it's better than the Titan. The camera's better, this screen's not better, but it's the right dimensions to use most apps and you can use like non-tablet apps and I, I kind of, I like, I like sliding it. <laughs> That's nice. I'm trying to think of something else nice to say about this one. I mean, it's a phone. It works, probably. I haven't put my SIM card in it yet. So those are my overall impressions. Um, I'm not just gonna sell this one because I don't want to inflict this screen on anybody else. It's not good. I'm just gonna keep it and I'm gonna use it. And like I said, I mean, it does feel good. Like, if I'm, even if I'm holding it like this or like this, it feels good in my hands. Like, it, I feel, it feels good. I wish that the screen didn't suck. I think that's it. I think those are all the thoughts that I have. 
about these two devices. Overall, if I'm gonna recommend one, it's gonna be this one, unless you need a better camera. But if you're somebody who like needs a better camera, buy a camera. You know, with all the money you're saving from this versus this, you can buy like a whole DSLR. Anyway, that's gonna be it. I guess if you have any questions, drop them in the comments. Like I said, I am returning this one, so if your question is very specific, I might not be able to answer it because I won't be able to do anything with this one once I obviously don't have it anymore. But if it's general or if it's like anything that's like screwy in the settings, I probably changed it. So ask away. Let me know. And these both run Android 9. So if you have any Android 9 questions, I mean, hit me up. I don't care. Let them like, let's chat. So again, this is going to be my main phone until I break it inevitably because I'm a phone breaker and this is a very breakable phone. Holy crap. Um, FX tech. Maybe next time, no curved screen. Just kidding, next time I'm gonna buy the Planet Computers Astro Glide because I'm not gonna learn anything from this and I am gonna spend the exact same amount of money on an equally weird looking phone next year. Anyways, goodbye.